So here we have a tillage radish, a daikon radish that was planted uh, July 13th. Um, we have to be very careful with our radishes, uh, not to plant them too early, and we often run into uh, a couple situations like that every year. Uh, if we plant them too early in the spring, we'll often see them uh, go to seed. If you plant them a little bit later, as the uh, days are getting shorter, they'll stay uh, vegetative. Um, within that seed uh, lot, there can be some variability. So if we're on the edge a little bit, we do tend to see a few uh, members of the population uh, go to seed. Just wanted to show the uh, variability in the uh, genetics of the uh, tillage radish. You can see that most of the population isn't going to seed, but you have this one oddball uh, in the population that uh, did manage uh, to uh, go straight to flower and put uh, seed pods on. We probably wouldn't see this again if we planted later in the year. Looking closer at the root here, we can see that uh, this much of the root was actually above ground. This portion of the root was below. We all like to see the huge root, uh, and it's very impressive. But what is actually uh, uh, breaking up some of the compaction are these uh, smaller root hairs, which are much deeper. In this case, we can see uh, the, the main tap root went down, hit a compacted layer, and wasn't able to penetrate through it, and uh, followed along on a horizontal plane, uh, trying to get down a little deeper. Uh, it's very interesting to look at the roots of some different crops. Um, the roots should be growing down instead of on a horizontal plane, so we know we do have a little bit of a compacted layer down there somewhere. As a general rule, roots can't penetrate more than 300 PSI, so there might be a penetrometer available in an area near you. The Nova Scotia Department of Agriculture, for example, has some penetrometers that are available for you to borrow. Uh, and it might be worth going out into your field and seeing if you do have a compaction layer, in which case you can't really uh, rely on something like tillage radish to break up that deep compaction unless there's some cracks in there. So in this plot we had a daikon radish planted. Uh, middle of July is fairly early to plant the daikon radish. You can see that some of it, you know, didn't go to flower and didn't produce the big tap root that we were looking for. Uh, but there are plenty of tap roots uh, that were formed. You can see that some of them got to quite a size. The holes formed here, some of them are three inches across and some of them, you know, are four inches deep on the larger parts of the uh, of the uh, daikon radish. Of course, what we're really looking for to uh, break up compaction is the smaller root that goes uh, deeper than that. You can see that we have some uh, holes on the uh, soil surface. That's really gonna speed things up in the spring, get some heat uh, into that soil at a depth. Also helps with uh, drainage and drying out that soil in some cases. So you can see that the residue breaks down really quickly. There's not a lot of residue there to contend with in the spring. Uh, so because it breaks down quickly again, you know, it has the ability to sop off a lot of nitrogen uh, that previous year, but it's going to release it really quickly in the spring, probably ahead of when your crop needs it, right? So we want to make sure that probably we're not planting uh, straight daikon radish. We want to be using it in a mix with something that's higher carbon. Uh, but maybe that's also going to be 